A space elevator is a transportation system which connects the Earth with space. When compared with a rocket, it will be very effective for carrying cargo and people, and therefore, a space elevator is highly expected to be an economical and environmentally friendly transportation method. Prior to 1991, the concept of a space elevator had been considered to be a dreamy idea because there existed no material which was light enough or strong enough to be used to make a cable connecting the Earth with space. This changed when, in 1991, carbon nanotube, a fairly light and strong material, was discovered, which has increased the likelihood for making the space elevator a reality. An artificial satellite circling the Earth maintains its altitude by moving fast enough not to fall against the Earth's gravity force. An artificial satellite that circles over the equator at an altitude of around 36,000 kilometers is called a geostationary satellite because it looks like it's at rest when seen from the Earth. From such a geostationary satellite, cables could be extended to both the Earth and space to help it keep its balance, and then climbers could go up and down along the cable to carry cargo and people. This is the space elevator. Now, let's look at the overall picture of the Obayashi Corporation space elevator. The total length is 96,000 kilometers. The place for arrivals and departures on the Earth is called an Earth port. At the altitude of geostationary orbit, the largest station, the geostationary station, is constructed. A counterweight on the space side tip of the cable is used to balance the weight of the space elevator. In addition to these, the following gravity centers can be built by taking advantage of the way that gravity diminishes with altitude. The Mars Gravity Center is constructed at an altitude of 3,900 kilometers, where the gravity is equal to that on Mars. The Lunar Gravity Center is constructed at an altitude of 8,900 kilometers, where the gravity is equal to that on the Moon. We will conduct research and training at each of these gravity centers at gravities that are similar to those found on the surfaces of both Mars and the Moon. The following gates and the space solar power systems would also be constructed. The low Earth orbit gate is constructed at an altitude of 23,750 kilometers. From here, artificial satellites are deployed down into the low Earth orbit, which is located at an altitude of 300 kilometers. The large-scale space solar power systems are constructed around the geostationary station using the space elevator. Geostationary satellites are deployed from this station. Beyond the geostationary orbit, we construct facilities for planetary exploration and resource mining in the solar system. Once a spacecraft is deployed from a certain altitude, it can escape the gravity field of the Earth by utilizing the circling speed and can then be inserted into the orbits of the other planets. The Mars Gate is constructed at an altitude of 57,000 kilometers where Mars-bound spacecraft will be deployed. The counterweight also plays a role as the solar system exploration gate, which can send spacecraft to Jupiter or asteroids. Next, we will describe how the space station will be constructed. Materials needed for the construction and assembly of the construction spacecraft are transported in several batches to the low Earth orbit using rockets. The spacecraft drifts upward using electric propulsion while circling the Earth. 
After reaching a geosynchronous orbit, it then starts circling at the same speed as the Earth's rotation. Once the spacecraft arrives at a given location, it moves up by simultaneously reeling out a cable that is equipped with thrusters at the tip. Around eight months after the rocket launch, the cable reaches the Earth's surface, and the spacecraft, which reaches an altitude of 96,000 kilometers, becomes a counterweight. Construction climbers go up one after another by attaching additional reinforcing cables to the preceding cable and then join the counterweight at the top. After the cable completes the reinforcement roughly 500 times, we start to use the climbers to carry cargo and people. The climbers weigh 100 tons each. A geosynchronous station is assembled with parts transported to a geosynchronous orbit using the completed cable. And then, the other facilities are constructed in parallel until the entire space elevator is completed. The Earth port, which is installed on the Earth's surface, is the arrival and departure gate to Earth. The Earth port is constructed in two sections, one onshore and one offshore on the equator. The onshore section is a town that contains a space elevator monitoring facility, a large airport, and big hotels where people and goods gather from all over the world, together with research institutes and factories related to space business. The offshore section, which is connected by an undersea tunnel, is where the major facilities of the Earth port are constructed, including the climber arrival and departure gates, a gate lobby, administrative facilities, hangars, repair factories, warehouses, and a research and development center. The offshore facility is located on a circle-shaped structure of a diameter of 400 meters. It floats on the ocean, with the buoyancy of the hollow lower part made from concrete. Usually, it is anchored to the bottom of the ocean, but if necessary, it can be moved. The tension of the cable is controlled with a ballast adjustment system using seawater. The biggest station of the space elevator, a geosynchronous station, employs large-scale space solar power generation and research and development utilizing the space environment and is also used as a sightseeing spot. The geosynchronous station is vertically elongated and composed of many units. The combination of similarly shaped units simplifies transportation and assembly and also allows the station to expand and the units to be replaced in case of failure. The unit is a hybrid structure made of metal panels and flexible membrane walls and has a length of 10.8 meters. During transportation to the station, three units are combined, which are towed by the climber. Each unit is compactly retracted in the shape of a triangular prism with sides that measure 3.6 meters each. During geosynchronous orbit, each unit is inflated with compressed air to be six times larger and will have a hexagonal prism shape. Longitudinal development allows for a vertical spiral shape configuration. Longitudinal and lateral development allows for an arbitrary combination of the units, which can be varied according to its function. The inside of the geosynchronous station is filled with air similar to that on the Earth. However, due to the non-gravity environment, the human body will float. There are many problems to be overcome before the space elevator can be made into a reality. However, 
If these problems were solved, if the development of the carbon nanotube cable and climbers were completed, then, assuming a construction period of 25 years, we believe that the operation of the geosynchronous station could begin in the year 2050.